Alrighty, folks, let's go ahead and get the show started today. I wanted to kick off with a few photographs that we as a team have taken in the field, whether it be at Brown Mountain, the Linville Gorge, or the Linville Mountain Research Center. The first photograph that I want you to take a look at, uh, this one was taken at the Brown Mountain Overlook just last September, September 2015. And what we had happen was the, the cloud cover in front of us, out over the the mountains had illuminated seemingly for no reason as we gazed at it and we studied it we began to notice that there's a series of six or seven lights above the clouds and these lights were emitting and beaming light through the clouds our photographer was able to get a grainy photograph of this and we've tried to enhance it and as you can see we've lost we have a little distort, distortion there but you can clearly see that these are abnormal lights that would appear in the sky our next photograph was taken at the Wiseman's View Overlook. And as you can see, and I'm going to do a series of photographs here, the light begins to show just above the tree line, but you can't really distinguish if it's in the trees or above. As the photos progress, our photographer was able to get a photograph of this light above the tree line. This is very interesting in that we're able to show that it began at or around ground level into the trees and then above. On this next clip, which is a video clip, it's going to be relatively short. I've showed this probably hundreds if not thousands of times. And this event occurred at the Lima Mountain Research Center. And if you, as you watch the video, and there's going to be a few zoom, we're going to zoom in and out here, you're going to be able to see that in this, at this evening as we were walking through the woods and I was leading a, a group through, and this happened to be a newspaper reporter from the Morgan News Herald who wanted to look at a location we had there on site and as we're walking I'm talking about the mysterious lights of the gorge and brown mountain lights out of nowhere we we our attention is drawn to a noise in the sky the entire group turns my response was is a turkey and that was kind of a nervous response it just the first thing I could kind of get out to kind of calm the crowd I didn't everybody was a little panicked I didn't want people to take off running on me we observed the sky, we didn't see anything clearly, but as you can see, upon video review, we were definitely being followed, tracked through the woods, and at one point, they made sure that we knew their presence was there. Hello folks, now we're going to talk about some of the history. The Appalachian Mountains formed about 480 million years ago, and at one point reached similar elevations to those of the Alps and the Rocky Mountains. The Linville Gorge the Grand Canyon, North Carolina. It's comprised of 11,786 acres around the Linville River and situated in the Pisgah National Forest. The river flows approximately 1,400 feet below the ridge. Now the name for Linville comes from John and William Linville who were scalped by the local Indians in 1766. Brown Mountain, elevation 2,283 feet and most well known for the Brown Mountain Lights. Alright folks, let's talk about some history that you may not know about. I want to start with the year 1780 and the Revolutionary War and how that relates to Linville and the Gorge and Old Highway 105. There's a trail now called the Over Mountain Victor Trail and this is what our high country militiamen used to go to and from the Battle of Kings Mountain. And as you know, we won that battle and as Thomas Jefferson pointed out, that battle was the turning point of the Revolutionary War. In addition, the area of Linville and, and the area of the gorge was used to mine ore, which was used to the benefit of the Southern Army during the Civil War. Subsequent to that, for many years, has been rumored, and the military denies it, I myself personally have seen military training in the gorge, but the military denies it. For years, it has been speculated and rumored that Special Forces use, uses the gorge for military training. Okay folks, the last part of history. It's time to tie in the federal government to the Brown Mountain Lights. And that's by way of Geological Survey, a report done in 1922. I'm not going to get a lot of detail about it because it's very easy to find on the web and I encourage you to read it. The report, you simply type it in, type in the report and look for it. 
Geological Survey Brown Mountain Lights, it's going to pop up a PDF. And this is kind of what one of the covers looks like. Inside the report, you're going to find history prior to 1922 where the investigators came in and talked to locals. And the locals gave the descriptions of the lights. I find this important because back in 1922 and prior to that, traffic in the gorge and around Brown Mountain was very limited. So the opportunity for mistaking these lights for other things is very limited. So I find this report probably one of the most credible in the field to this day. There's other reports out there and I don't discourage you to research them, but do remember, this report was made prior to automobile traffic being that prominent in the gorge, campfires, flashlights, things like that. They simply were not as prominent in 1922 and prior as they are today. Okay folks, it's time to talk about legends. There's a lot of legends out there, so I'm going to focus on the main ones. The most popular one, that I, popular one that I know about is about the Native Americans and the battle. And the legend has it, following the battle, that the wives took torches and went in search of their fallen warriors. Unfortunately, some of these warriors were never found. And the legend has it that their wives' spirits look for those warriors to this day. Number two is about a plantation owner coming to Brown Mountain to do a hunt. The plantation owner did not return home following the hunt, so his slaves came to Brown Mountain, again using torches, in search of this plantation owner, who was never found. A third legend has that there was a wife murdered, and that these lights are paranormal, and they are of her spirit searching for the murderous husband. The last one, which is least popular, less information on is UFO alien activity. To really get any information on this you really have to talk about the locals who have experienced it and others from around the country who have came just for that specific research. Okay, now let's talk about theories. There's a lot of theories out there on the Brown Mountain Lights and the mysterious lights of Limbo Gorge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the main ones. And the first one is supernatural and paranormal. I really leave that up to each individual to make that decision. Some believe in those things, others don't. Number two, UFO alien. Kind of the same thing as the paranormal. I really leave that up to the individual. As, is, as with the paranormal, UFO alien theory, both have a lot of folks, a lot of supporters and believers, and a lot of folks with said to be documentation of their specific belief. Number three, Plasma. And this is a very, very viable option. What I would encourage you to do is do your own research. A great source would be Joshua Warren out of Asheville, North Carolina. He's done a lot of research into these lights and has a lot of information on it. Swamp gas. And this is usually what the scientific community go to. I don't really believe it, but again, each person will make their own decision. The research is out there. Take a look at it and you decide. Static electricity energy release from the earth. Not a lot of information out there on the internet about that. There, there are books that you can get and read and study on it. 
I would encourage you to do that. When I look at the lights, I oftentimes believe that may be what I'm seeing, especially when I have ground to cloud activity, but it's not always the same. It changes. Biological. This is a concept theory that never, had never been presented to me. Last September, September 2015, a couple visiting from out of state introduced me to this theory. Listening to their thoughts, their research, and their opinions on it was pretty compelling. Some of the things that they had looked at is the angler fish and a shark that is illuminated in the ocean. And these things attract prey. With that concept, this could be a viable answer to the brown mountain lights. What that biological is, what that creature would be, I have no idea. Now it's time to answer your question. When, where, and how to observe the Brown Mountain Lights? So let me give you the months. The two most popular are September and October. However, you can observe the lights from late September through early April. The reason for that is there's simply no leaves on the trees. And if they are, they're small. I have myself personally experienced the lights year round. But again, the best observation time late September through early April. Now what to look for in conditions? Well what I look for is warm days followed by a cool evening. Usually a 5 to 10 degree difference. Makes, makes for the best options. Now leading into that, you have more chance of seeing the lights if this day follows or is involved in a thunderstorm or many days of showers. Again, that's what I use. There's other criteria out there. I encourage you to do your research and make your decision. Now where to look for them at? You can go to Wiseman's View, Brown Mountain Overlook, Table Rock. There's multiple places that you can go. The most popular is Highway 181, the Brown Mountain Overlook. and It's also the easiest. The next second popular that I know of is Wiseman's View. But again, do your research. Find which one of these overlooks is most comfortable for you and operate from there.